My name is Kara Crane, and today I'm going to be talking about our newest laser here at Contour Dermatology, the Gentle YAG. And this laser is beneficial for our hair removal in our darker skin type patients. Permanent hair reduction, it's a long-term stable reduction in the number of hairs regrowing after a treatment regimen. And this is the definition that the FDA allows us to use. I always tell people when they come in for hair removal before we start the treatment, you're never gonna be totally hairless. I think people have the expectation that a hair will never regrow in that area after we treat it, but that's just not the situation. We, if we can decrease the density of the hair, the thickness of the hair, and slow down the growth, that's considered a successful treatment. So I always tell people, you can go from shaving every day to shaving maybe once a week and if just real fine hairs at that, that's a good treatment. How does the laser work? The laser targets pigment in the hair follicle. So heat is absorbed by the melanocytes and that destroys the cells lining the hair follicle, specifically around the bulb and the bulge. This is where the stem cells are in the hair follicle and we have to dissipate enough heat in those areas to prevent the hair from regrowing. Again, the, the target is those stem cells. If we don't destroy them, they'll just regenerate and the hair will grow again. And the laser operates on a theory of selective photothermolysis. This is pretty much any laser device. And that concept essentially is that we are targeting one specific thing and leaving the surrounding tissues intact without damaging them. So with this laser, again, melanin, so it's melanin, hemoglobin or water are the targets. I put a lot of pictures in here about this, but um, essentially the bulb, we have the stem cells and the bulge, again, the, the stem cells. And those are what we need to have heat in to kill off the follicle. The difference between the gentle, the gentle lays and the gentle light YAG, uh, the gentle lays is our old device that we've used and it's still a great laser and it has a wavelength of 755 nanometers. The general YAG is 1064 nanometers. So it's a longer wavelength. And the benefit of this is that if we penetrate the skin deeper, we're minimizing the competing chromophore of epidermal melanin. So in darker skin type patients, uh, their pigment in their skin can be a target and the laser will absorb that energy and not go where we want it to go, which is the pigment of the hair shaft. So there's a greater risk when we use the gentle lays, the 755, on darker skin types. And the YAG is the best laser for darker skin types simply because we're minimizing that risk of the competing chromophores. This is a little hard to see, but this is essentially just showing that as wavelength increases, melanin absorption decreases. It sounds counterintuitive because that's our target. Um, but so long as we're in that 700 to 1,000 nanometer wavelength, we are targeting where we need to target. And once the wavelength gets a little bit shorter, the target wouldn't be the hair follicle, it'd be the skin pigment. Phases of hair growth, we have antigen, catagen, intelligen. Antigen is the growth phase. About 85% of our hairs are in this growth phase um, at any given time, and that can last two to seven years, and that's genetically dependent. Some people have a longer antigen phase than others. Catagen is the transition phase between growth and resting phase, and then telogen is the resting phase, and hairs will stay in this phase for about three to four months, and we have about 15% of our hairs in this phase at any given time. And this is important because the lasers only work on hair follicles that are in the growth phase. The reason being, it's attached to the blood supply in the growth phase. Intelligent, it becomes detached, and then we're not gonna, we, we need this attachment in order to kill off the stem cells, because that's what regulates the, the hair follicle growth. <coughs> Again, just another picture, you can see the, the blood attachment here. It's beginning to detach in catagen and then it's completely detached in uh, telogen. Yeah. 
So expectations, I think this is probably one of our most important jobs when we're treating patients if, for any cosmetic procedure. Um, it's just setting up what their expectations are and if it's realistic with what the treatment can accomplish. And I always tell them 15 to 20% of hairs will be killed off with each treatment. And, and that's if we can get them in optimal parameters and that can rely on their pain tolerance, if they've had any history of sun exposure. If we're doing optimal parameters, we will kill off that amount with each subsequent treatment. So that's why we give them four to six as our range as far as total number of treatments necessary. The other hairs will enter a telogen phase and then a portion of that hair follicle will eventually recover and start to regenerate a hair follicle again. So a lot of times people will come in after one treatment and say, oh, I don't have any hair growth. Well, it's, we haven't done a successful treatment yet. We still need more. It's just we may need to wait longer between sessions because part of that follicle will regenerate and regrow. Consult, we always prep them. Four to six treatments are necessary. Only treats pigmented hair. The, the laser just doesn't see white, grays, red hair. I've had people ask me if they can dye the hair. That doesn't work um, because the dye doesn't penetrate to the shaft of the hair follicle, the root, and that's where we need the heat to go. Hair type, if it's real fine hair, it's less of a target. If it's real light brown, again, less of a target. It doesn't work as well. I have some men who have just real fine light brown hair on their back and I always tell them, I go, this is just not ideal treatment for hair removal. But we'll, we'll still try, but I just prep them for that expectation. Skin color, this is less of an issue now that we have the, the YAG. It's more of an issue with the, the gentle lays. Patient age, I put this on here because a lot of times we have young teens come in, 12, 13, they have that real fine facial hair. It's hard to treat, especially if there's hormonal influences, so I always, again, prep them that they may need more treatments down the road or it may not work, again, because it's fine hair and then there's that hormonal influence. And then with both lasers, they can't be in the sun because although the longer wavelength is less apt to target that epidermal melanin. It still can be a risk for patients um, if they have sun exposure with either laser. It's still, we're still not totally eliminating that risk. There's still potential, so they cannot be in the sun. <coughs> Pre-treatment, I really still find this to be a confusing thing uh, amongst people. Um, patients always come in and have heard various things. So some people will say, oh, I was told not to shave for a month. I was told not to shave for a week. Um, last week I had somebody come in who said, oh, I was told I could pluck. Uh, you cannot tweeze, pluck, or wax before treatment because you're pulling the hair follicle out of the shaft and that's removing the target. The laser just won't see it. Shave. We want you to shave. The day before, even the morning of is fine. Um, and the reason being, if they have hair, the laser, if they have long hair on, above the surface of the skin, the laser will utilize energy to burn that hair down and it will stay on the surface, but we want it to go to the root. And not only is it not maximizing the heat in the shaft of the hair follicle, it's gonna be more apt to burn the patient because the energy is gonna be on the surface of the skin. Complications, uh, blistering, scarring, hypo or hyperpigmentation. Um, blistering and scarring is pretty rare, but the pigmentation issues certainly are an issue. Uh, less so with this new laser now. And this is just showing one of the things we can do to help protect again, the, or minimize the competing chromophore of epidermal melanin is we use the dynamic cooling device, which is the pre spray of cryogen that comes out before the laser, then the laser energy is delivered, less apt to attract the, the pigment in the epidermis if we pre-cool before. I also am a big fan of using the Zimmer because if we can pre-cool that skin just for a few minutes, you can't use it too long because then you'll decrease the temperature of the target so much that it won't absorb the heat as well, but a few minutes also is an additional protective mechanism.